All right, everyone, welcome to this Minecraft tutorial video here on the channel. And within this video, we're going to be looking at chat message commands in Minecraft. Simple ones anyway. And I've got four examples to show you to teach you how to do this. And you may not even know this is even possible because obviously you can do chat messages in the game just by chatting with people in multiplayer or whatever in the normal text window here like so but uh you can actually inject chat messages into the chat log i guess using commands and you can actually style them as well you can color them you can give them styles you can do multicolored messages as well so yeah lots of really cool stuff so Without further ado, let's get into it here. I'm in Minecraft 1.21.4 and I'm on the Java edition. I'm pretty sure this styling and how I'm actually doing it is only for Java edition only. I don't think this same thing works in Bedrock, unfortunately. And the other thing I want to stress in this video here is potentially the upcoming spring update that's coming somewhat soon might change how this works. I don't know if it will or not, but if it does change in Minecraft 1.21.5 or whatever it's going to be called, I'll put a pinned comment on this video, uh, basically showing you any additional fixes that may be needed. But as of right now, the syntax is correct and the commands will work. So this first command here, you can obviously run these commands from your chat uh, like, you know, text area, or you can use a command block. This first one just adds a message into the chat. So this is a random message. Hi. So that is as simple as you can get pretty much. And the second one goes up one stage further. This one actually is a colored message. So this is an insane red message. <laughs> as you can see right there. So that is one color. And then this third command here, we have a multicolored message. So that's using three colors in the same message here. And then the fourth one here goes up even further. This one is multicolored, but also using different styling. So we have bold, underlined, and italics. So you can do other styling as well. Like um, you can do strike through, or you can do obfuscated text which makes it look all jumbled up but those are the three styles i did for this example here but as you can see we can just run a command block and it just works and we can call these over and over and over again in any order we want as you can see right there so it's pretty handy for custom maps and just general puzzle maps and lots of lots of different things really creative projects all sorts of things so in order to get this to work we're doing we're using a slash tell raw command in minecraft and we're using that for all of these so i'm now going to show you in a text editor these commands and how they're actually working all right everyone we're now inside the text editor right here and these are the four commands we're going to be going through I would urge you to watch this part of the video so you get to understand how these commands work and so you can increase your knowledge. And these commands will be in the description of the video so you can have a look for yourself and copy and paste and all that sort of thing. But um, the first command here is the simple one where we're just doing a standalone message. Now, we have the slash tell raw command, as you can see, the tell raw command. And in this case, we're doing the nearest player as the selector. So you basically have to give it a selector where it will either do a specific player or the nearest player or a random player or all players. It really does depend on what you want to do. But in this case, I'm doing the nearest player. And we have square brackets because like, you don't need to have the square brackets in this case, but I've just added them anyway, because essentially you can provide the tell raw command a collection of text data. And in this case, we just happen to give one entry to the command. So as you can see here, we have one entry inside of the command and it's just some text with the text inside. And that is pretty simple, right? Pretty simple in the normal sort of thing here. Now, the second one is very similar, 
with only one entry, but it has additional data for the color. So in this case, I'm using a hexadecimal color code, which is for red. So that makes this text red. And that is that is it, basically. Now, the third one gets a little bit more interesting. So this does need the square brackets because we've got three text objects. So we have this one right here for the multi-text. We have this one for the colored text and this one for the message text. So in each of these cases, we provide some text and we also provide some spaces as well to separate the words from each other. And we also provide color codes as well. So we have, you know, we have red and we have yellow and we have cyan, I guess, as the colors. And that is how we do multicolored text using this command here. Now, the last one here is a tell raw command with the styling and the coloring. So as you can see here, we still have three text objects but it has styling in there as well. Now, one weird thing I found when playing with Minecraft is that if you set a bold to the first object, it seems to be persistent in all of the different things. Now, I don't know if that happens in other stylings within the game here, but if it does, just go to the other text objects and turn the needed styling off if you don't want it to carry on into the next bit of text here. So you can see here the first one, I'm using a color for the bold text and I've set bold to true. In the next one, I just want it to be underlined. So I've done underlined as true, but I've also set bold to false so that it does not carry over. And I've done exactly the same thing here where I've done the italics as true and bold as false. Now, that might be a bug with the command or I don't really know. But if you come across this issue with this command, you know what to do when it comes to styling. You just have to turn off stuff or turn on stuff depending on what you want to do. Now, hopefully that makes sense and hopefully this helps you with this command here. All right, everyone, thank you for watching this video here. If you did enjoy this tutorial and you learned something new and you want to support the channel, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It'd be very much appreciated. And make sure that you hit the bell so you're notified of new videos here on the channel. And if you want to follow my socials, they're on screen and in the description. And if there's any other tutorials you want me to do, let me know in the comments down below and I may do it for a future video. But uh, stay happy and healthy, everyone. Hopefully you can do a lot with this in your creative projects or whatever you want to do. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.